Hey everybody, Matt Martin here with this week's Broker Minute or Two. Hey, listen, at the end of every quarter, there's a lot of good things that happen. One of them is what I jokingly refer to as the Division of Real Estate's uh, quarterly National Enquirer. Uh, and I, I joke about that. There's a lot of great content in the quarterly newsletter, but there's also the section of uh, licensee violations. And a lot of people go there uh, just to see who got caught doing what. Um, Taking the joking aside, there's a couple in here that uh, I just wanted to touch on today briefly. Uh, one is a little humorous, but uh, let's get into it. The first one is um, an agent in Highland admitted that she exceeded the scope of access granted by the listing agent when she and another person entered the home for the purposes other than showing the property to potential buyers. Hmm, what would that be? Um, her contact her conduct failed to show competence as a real estate agent did not conform to accepted standards of the industry and was in violation of utah law and administrative rules um, from the division of real estate she was assessed a fine of five thousand dollars and some ce requirements put on probation with her license and a lot of people hear that's like oh big deal her license was put on probation well you get two maybe three of those and pretty soon your license is gone and your livelihood's gone so is a big deal big deal but let's talk about that for a second we are the professionals it reflects on us as an entire industry when we when somebody does something like this uh so i would just say this if you're going to show a home show a home uh, and whatever permission you're given stick by that permission so we were talking about this in a sales meeting yesterday if somebody gives you permission to show somebody and your client doesn't show up and you still go th through the property, you probably ought to update the listing agent and say, hey, my client didn't show up. Can I still go through the property? Right? Because your initial request was on the premise that you were going to take a buyer through. So communication is always helpful. The second one here is just a reminder to us that in the one of the division rules says that if you do not have written permission for uh, typically a listing agreement to advertise a property, you cannot advertise the property. Okay, so in this particular case, the individual um, put on the MLS and on KSL, they mixed up the letters there, uh, KSL after the property sold. So kind of trying to troll for buyers apparently. And yes, he was fine and that is inappropriate, but it's a much broader picture. One of the in issues we were talking about in our sales meeting yesterday down in Pleasant Grove was, there's a lot of agents out there who, uh, whether you're doing it or you've been the receiver of this, they call up and they say, hey, I just want to advertise your property. Can I go and take some videos and put it on my website or whatever? <clears throat> Seems pretty innocuous, right? But in reality, with the backdrop of the division rule, you should not be doing that, right? Unless you have permission from the sellers. And when I say permission, you probably ought to have that in writing at a minimum, a text or an email. Um, if you don't have that, you are in violation of the division rule. And if you go through this week, this quarter's newsletter, you'll realize that this is something that they are the nine investigators at the division of real estate are paying attention to. All right. One last thing I wanted to show you. So this is the um, table of contents for the, this quarter's newsle newsletter. And I'm not going to go through these. I just wanted to point out two that I think would be worth your time reading. And the first one is when is a license required and rogue rogue transactions that's a great one to read and then the other one is advertising without permission which we just touched on uh laurel north is one of the investigators and she does a great job in outlining what the issues are and what to be concerned about at three different uh use cases so if you have time make sure you uh, touch base on those uh i'm proud of what we do as a company we rarely have somebody in the quarterly newsletter which is a good sign you know what if you ever do end up there uh, sometimes it's just for something, you know, uh, you hadn't been paying attention to, but we do everything we can to keep you out of there. Keep up the great work and have a great week.